Okay, so we're gonna jump into, we actually got some really good questions. Like, what does the hashtag mean? Like, what are, you know, what's, what's actually going on in this code? And hopefully this will clear up some of the answers um, and get us into a little bit of the detail of like, what is base R, what, it, you know, what are the fundamental pieces of R? Okay, can you see my slide advanced? And we had a little, okay, cool. <laughs> okay, so some of, some of us had some frustrations getting started, um, totally normal. Um, one of the biggest things working with R is just making sure that your software is compatible, that you, you know, they, uh, any specialized packages you're downloading, that the, they've been updated, that they work with your version of R. Um, and so that is pretty common, um, but something that, you know, hopefully with practice will get a little bit easier. Another thing that we might run into is data type problems. So some of you played around with the, the colors in your plot that you were working with, and you may have noticed things were in quotes. Um, so, so R recognizes different data types. So you can have numbers, you can have strings. Um, and so sometimes if, you know, maybe your, your data types are a little bit, you know, maybe not what you expect, you might find that you can't do math on something that is a, that's a word. So um, you can run into problems with that. Can definitely have, I mean, this applies to things even outside of R, but just working directory problems. R uh, is R Studio and R are looking for certain files when you're reading data in. And you may find it's like, oh, you know, this data doesn't exist. I can't find it. Um, it's just R doesn't know where to look for it. And so sometimes we have to be pretty explicit about that. Um, and finally, um, R is case sensitive. So um, we gotta be careful with typos, lowercase x, uppercase x are different. Um, there are some ways that R, R Studio can actually help with that. There's some auto completion, um, even with like column names and things we'll get into a little bit later. Um, but we'll try to be vigilant about that. And, um, you know, just if you're getting errors, always take a, a quick look and see if you've, you've made any typos. Um, I still do them all the time. So something to be careful of. Okay. And so going forward, um, we'll be explaining different codes of uh, chunks of code. And just when we're looking at the slide, the chunks of code will appear in uh, gray here. Um, so this little bit right here is code that we might have in our script or that we might type into the console, but we haven't hit enter yet. Um, and then this line here is the output. So just directly what we expect after we, we enter that code. Okay, just monitoring the chat a little bit. <laughs> Okay, so first and foremost, R is a calculator. So I don't know if you wanna like get rid of your calculator app on your computer or your phone or whatever, but um, R can do some basic calculations, which is pretty handy. So if we type in our code two plus two, get output is four, two times four is eight, two to the power of three is eight. Um, one thing to note is that when we type in that command or type in anything, um, R thinks that we want to print it. So if you're familiar with any other coding languages, this isn't always the case. Uh, for example, Python makes you, you know, you have to say you want to print something, um, but R will go ahead and, and print things a lot of the time. So if you're following along, take a second, play around with the calculator aspect of things. Um, the plus, the minus, um, divided by and multiply symbols, all you know, kind of are, are pretty straightforward. Uh, you can also do caret or a double star for to you know raise something to the power. Parentheses, honored, just like uh, you know, um, in in math when you're growing up and taking uh, taking math in classes, and um, probably won't need to use this too much, but the um, double percent sign is uh, something that will help you find the remainder. Um, so that can be kind of helpful if you're, you're um, getting into more advanced stuff.
Okay. And so, like I said, it can do um, a lot of pretty complicated math, um, you know, honors these parentheses here, um, you know, honors these parentheses before it does the division. And if you're somebody who follows viral math problems on, on Facebook or anything like that, <laughs> you can uh, lay the question to rest. So um, if, you know, you walk away from this class, you know, you can feel confident that you know how to do these problems because you have the power of R. Okay, so take a second, um, go ahead and open if you haven't already. Oops. Sorry about that. There we go. Uh, so go ahead and open your R Studio. I'm gonna pull mine to the side so hopefully everyone can see a little bit of both. So if I just wanted to go ahead and evaluate one of these, can just copy and paste. And we can do some basic math. Um, one thing I will note is you want to be careful of spaces. Just make sure everything looks nice. Because if I had done this, that kind of looks like negative three. Um, so just be mindful of your, your spacing and, and make sure things look good when you're typing them. Okay, um, definitely got a comment about the, uh, the hashtag or the pound sign. Um, so that's allowing you to make comments in your code. So that's always best practice is to, you know, write notes to yourself because in, in two months, like I know I wouldn't remember what I did. Like I wanna know, okay, this is, this is what was happening. Um, you know, note to my colleague, like this is what this means, those kind of things. Um, you can do as many um, of those uh, pound signs as you want, uh, just to make, you know, you can make lines with it. Um, and just, you know, generally like leave comments uh, to, to help yourself later. Um, you can also include them on lines of code. So nothing to the right of that pound sign will be evaluated, but if you want to include things to the left of it, those will be run or just will ignore everything else. Okay, so sort of one of the really powerful things about R is that you can make variables. Uh, so these are just, it's anything you wanna save for later. It has some kind of value to it, um, but you're making a shortcut to whatever that content is. Um, so uh, we would do that in R with the equal sign. Um, and you may have seen that in the code already or this kind of left uh, arrow sign. Um, and we're gonna use that to assign values uh, to a specific name. Um, and as a reminder, just be careful of, of case and spelling and what you call things, uppercase and lowercase are different. Okay, so down here, what I'm doing is I'm assigning this value X, the, or sorry, this variable X, the value of two. And so when I just say X in my console or in my code, R evaluates that as two. And if we want to, it, it recognizes that value. So if we want to do anything, you know, taking that variable into account, you know, R knows to translate that. So X times four is eight, X plus two is, is four. Pretty straightforward. So we're not, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe in most of your day-to-day, -day, you won't really be just like assigning X equals two. Um, and the most common data type, I think, that most of you will be using is a data frame. Um, so this is a little bit more complicated kind of object. Um, so we'll get into it a little bit more later, but you can think of them instead of just being one number, one, you know, string of letters. Um, they're, they're more like an Excel spreadsheet. So they have rows, those can be, um, you know, different subjects, different observations over time, um, and different 
and it also has a uh, columns. So those could be like, you know, a measurement that you took, you know, every day or, um, you know, some other descriptive variable. Okay, and like I said, data frames are a little bit advanced. Um, we'll start with something a little bit similar just to kind of get our feet wet. Um, and we'll talk first about one dimensional objects. And so those are often referred to as vectors. And so vectors can have multiple observations in them. So helping us keep things collected and together at the same time. Um, but each of these um, observations or, or items in our vector, they have to be the same class. So if we remember, um, our object X that we assign to, we can ask what the class is and it'll R will tell us that that was numeric. And if we have a new, um, a new item, so we've assigned that, um, hello world. We can print that we get the output, hello world. And if we wanna know what the class of, of Y is, we can go ahead and ask. And we know that that is, uh, it's a word. It's not uh, something that we can do math on. What does print mean? So print is just repeating. Um, so I'll go back actually. So print is actually just um, being explicit that we want that spit out in the console. So if we just did Y, it also prints it. But if we want to just be sure about that, maybe we're doing like something more complicated in a function, um, then print is just the explicit way to do that. Good question. Okay, so in your console, go ahead and take a second to, or in your, in your script, go ahead and take a second to assign an, a variable name. And so it doesn't have to just be X or, um, you know, just Y or something like that. You can actually have a full um, word as your variable. Um, so go ahead and assign that your name. You'll wanna make sure that is in quotes. Okay, so looks like this, um, you know, the variable name is gonna be on the left-hand side and then whatever the value is, is on the right-hand side. Okay, so we talked a little bit about, <clears throat> a little bit about vectors. So if we want multiple things stored in one object, we can actually, or in one variable, we can actually do that too using, um, using the combined function. So that collects, combines, joins. Sometimes I always thought of it as concatenate um, single R objects into a vector. Um, and most commonly we'll use, you know, numbers, strings, maybe some other data types. Uh, but let's say we wanna collect uh, or combine these four numbers together and keep them in one object. Um, we can go ahead and do that. And then when we ask, remember that a vector has to be all the same type. And so we can go ahead and ask class and it tells us that X is numeric because these are all numbers. Okay, so let's try really quickly to assign, um, make use the combine function to assign your first and last name as two separate uh, character strings into a single vector called name two. Okay, so remember, 
what I want is on the left-hand side and the, the new variable name. And to use the combine function, I just have a C and whatever I'm gonna do that function on is in the parentheses. Okay, so looks like something like that. If I do, oh, actually, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Okay, again, it looks something like that. Okay, length is a really useful function to get you know, just get us uh, some more information about how long a vector is um, or, you know, any other object, um, which, you know, there's some information about it already. Um, so if we wanted to, you know, go back to that vector that we made, that was the, the collection of those four numbers, length will tell us that that was length four. And our, you know, string that said, hello world, it's just one, it's those quotes mean it's treated as one word. Um, so it tells us that that's length one. Okay, so uh, yeah, I didn't want to give it away, but what do we expect for the length of our name variable? And what about our name two variable? As we might expect, so the length of name one, sorry, um, is one and the length of name two is these two objects. So it tells us that that's length two. Okay, the cool thing that R can do is it can perform functions on entire vectors of numbers very easily. So if you don't wanna you know, repeat work over and over again, um, you can take that vector of those four numbers, you can add two to each number, you could multiply each number by three, or um, really interesting, if you give it a, um, you know, an object to add that's already combined, it'll go ahead and add the first um, object to the first, or the first number to the first um, index of that variable and, and so on. Um, so it can do some pretty neat things. Okay, so let's, um, pause here and we'll go ahead and jump back to the lab. We had a question at the very end of our breakout room, if you wouldn't mind uh, showing us why both, once you have my num and my character, um, don't, aren't divisible by three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. If you could show that maybe. Yeah, let me open, there's a little bit of like text ahead of time. So let me open the key for that. Okay, so just in my console, um, here's my num, your numbers can be different, it doesn't matter. Um, so I'm saving that. The my character running that. So if I do class my num, it's numeric. Move this up just a little. And class my character. It's character, okay? So they're different data types. If I go ahead and string them both together, um, R, you know, is combining them, but we know they're different data types. Um, so what happens with R is this is, you know, it kind of doesn't tell you this, which, um, you know, maybe is not the best thing, but oops. if I go ahead and type that, you see now these, numbers are actually in quotes, okay? So it's thinking that they are a word, that they're a character type, okay? So if I were to say, you know, take a character divided by three, I can't do that. It's not a number. And so same thing if I have both and I wanna divide it by three, I can't do that either. Okay, hopefully that makes, makes sense. So just keep in mind that if, R is combining things that are numeric and character type that usually what happens 
is it ends up everything is a character. And this happens if you've got a, like a column of data and some of it is numeric and some of it is, you know, descriptive, it'll all just end up being um, character type. All right. Okay, so <laughs> this is exactly what I was just talking about. So you uh, can't perform algebra on things that are words. Um, so you're gonna get an error like this, which is kind of unscrutable, but um, just know that if something is a character, you can't really do math on it. Okay, um, and so you can actually save new, um, you know, if you're modifying, you know, doing algebra on a vector that you have, you can actually save it as a brand new variable. You saw that a little bit already with, um, you know, saving the new variable both. Um, so, you know, you can have nested layers upon layers of variables if you want to. Um, and in this case, um, something important to note is that, you know, we've named something here Y, um, but if you recall, we had something before that was called hello world, um, and that's been overwritten. So R only recognizes the most recent object that you've kind of called something. Uh, you can get a little bit more detail than just using the class function. So the str function is one that I use all the time. It gives you the structure of an object. So it tells you not only the data type. So this one, x is numeric. Um, it also tells you that there were four items in the list and it gives you some of the values that are in that. Um, and then same thing with the, the Y. Okay, so hopefully by now you feel comfortable creating a new markdown um, script or even just a, a bare bones R script. Um, you feel really cool using R as a calculator um, you're able to assign values to variables and you feel comfortable performing a little, um, you know, preliminary algebra on some of those numeric variables. Can't do algebra on character variables. Okay, so um, that was the last uh, bit. And hopefully um, if you haven't gotten to part two already um, that you feel comfortable jumping in there. Um, any questions up to this point? Um, I know this is like, um, kind of drinking from a fire hose a little bit. If you redefine something, like our previous example, I had to find my char without mm -hmm. characters and just with numerics. So it actually worked when I tried to divide it. But then when I went back and changed my char to be characters, both didn't change. It still let, was still, because I defined both earlier. So the both still had my numeric values in there. Right, exactly. So it doesn't change it everywhere. So if you, you know, you made some kind of object and you're like doing a lot of stuff to it and you name it, and then you go back and change all the things that were preliminary in it, you can't recreate it, but you still have that, that, uh, that variable saved with the information you wanted. Okay, so I'd have to redefine it if it, whatever it's in its definition had changed. Exactly. Okay. Okay. 